Howdy folks. Just check the stream. Make sure we're all hunky dory. My framework looks pretty good. <clears throat> Just check it. Uh, where's my live? Oh dear. You can never find out. Oh, you think that I'm live. No, it does think I'm live. Damn. Fees are good. Fees are good. Let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> so it's been chaos this week here, unfortunately. Uh, Sparkle, our cat, is a bit up and down like a yo-yo. Had a very bad weekend. Uh, his diabetes is playing up. So we've been backwards and forwards to the vets, etc. Um, but I figured I'd still do the stream anyhow. Because it's um, looking a bit better for him at the moment. Better than at the start of the week. He's currently still at the vets. They're uh, changing his dose, I think. Um, he had all sorts of side effects like dehydration and God knows what else, like you do. But anyhow, so uh, let's look at the community stuff first. Probably a good idea. Hope everyone's good. Let me know if you're in the chat or look if you don't. Um, num, num, num. so what's happened? It was only since Friday actually because it wasn't a Wednesday stream. Um, it was Wednesdays got pushed onto Friday last week, so it's only a few days ago. Um, Matthew Venn gave a really good uh overview and intro to I think it's called Open Road. Um, if you haven't heard of that, um, it's basically an open source tool chain for designing chips. It's really, really interesting. Let me, um, uh, there's a good video for you guys to go and watch after you finished my stream, of course. Not before. Must be checking. Uh, Matthew Venn. Matthew Venn. Let me. Um, hmm. He's actually on. His handle on Twitter is at Matthew Venn. Uh, Spelt thus. Hmm. And he went through, I think all he was doing was just like a single inverter to start with. And um, so it was very simple, but you could actually see how the layers were built up and stuff. And, but more importantly, you could see him going through the tools. He had to go and hack some of the configurations as well, because uh, <laughs> when you build the chip, there he has an inverter in it. You have to... Get rid of a whole bunch of configurations that you'd normally have, default configurations, like clocks and stuff. But anyway, it's really interesting. 
Uh, and if you're interested in just having a look at that process, even if you're not building a chip, uh, check out uh, that video because it was great. <clears throat> I really enjoyed watching that. And that was part of the uh, Hackaday's uh, Remoticon, I think it was called. I don't know what they called it, Remoticon, something like that. It's an online um, thing. Um, but it's really, really interesting. And um, normally getting a chip made is too expensive unless you're part of a, a, an academic institution or something that has regular builds um, that you can get onto. But in this case, Google are sponsoring the builds. They're actually doing these builds and they're allocating, um, as well as building their own stuff, they're also leaving room on each build for a whole bunch of open source projects. Uh, so if you get shortlisted, you can get your project built, which is amazing. And they're not just going to do it once, they're going to do it more than once. Uh, really, really very interesting indeed, if you're into that stuff. So do check it out when you get time. Uh, it's worthwhile if you're interested in that sort, sort of stuff. And of course, he's using Yosis and things like that in Verilog. Uh, he's not using nmargin in this particular case, although you could just as easily do that. So he's actually generating it all the way through using the open source tools and a tool called Magic as well. Um, so yeah, I wanted to mention that because that's really, really cool. Um, that's 113 nanometers, so it's not like you know state of the art or anything. But you can actually get a lot made on there. Also, when you get your design done, you get a free risk five built in with some debugging and some logic lines so that you can tap into, you know, a number of lines inside your design to see what's going on in there, <coughs> which is kind of cool. But it also it helps them to test this particular risk five, uh, small risk five design that they, um, they're replicating in there as well. They get it replicated on different parts of the, the, the wafer, I guess. Um, so that's that. Uh, what else have we got? Um, so uh, those that may have been looking at NMIGEN for the first time may have caught Robert uh, Barrack. Is it Burke? Um, he's risk um, he's uh, building a 68,000 using NMIGEN. So it's a series of uh, YouTube uh, tutorials. Um, Laurie listed this under getting started with nmigen by the way so there's loads of links in there he's also done his own tutorial which is um really nice as well um but he was working on this risk 5 processor that he was building out of um chips like um i don't know if it was all ttl chips or something anyhow he has it's kind of, he has a bus, a bus plane and then he has these other boys he puts in. Anyhow, he was kind of designing that before, but came a cropper and the design wasn't working out really. And that was put on pause for quite a long time. Now he's now returned to that. Now this time what he's doing is he's um, building it in NMIGEN first before he actually builds any hardware. He's designing each of the pieces uh, in NMIGEN and using formal to test it and stuff and connect the pieces together which is very interesting have i got uh yeah i've got the link for that and i think um Laurie may have added this already to the forum post but uh it's there as well again don't watch this until our stream's finished this will be trouble so um another good one there for you to bank when you've got time um he's just restarted that um, so definitely worth a follow, but you might want to see 68,000 ones first. I mean, in, in the order that you see his stuff, do his tutorial first, um, and go through that so you understand the basics of NMIGEN, then go through his 68,000 design, all the YouTube videos for that, because he introduces you how he's doing his NMIGEN and stuff through that, and it's really good. He also shows you the formal stuff as well, which is nice. And then, you know, you can move on to his risk 5 design because it jumps in a bit a bit deeper quite quickly. Um, so definitely check out his stuff. Really good. 
Um, and it's really interesting what he's doing with the Risk Five as well. And the fact that he, even though he's designing these with chips and stuff to go on boards, um, over several boards, doing the Imagen first is quite a, quite a good idea, quite a good way of doing it. Um, so it's an interesting combination there. So that's really interesting. Sorry, sip of tea required. what you guys have been up to this week do let me know or if there's anything you want me to talk about today again um oh, let me get the um forum open here that's quite a good idea to read the next instruction. Mm. Uh, let me just open this window. Bear with me. I did mark this. Okay, we've got a forum open. So, just looking back through so the Friday stream, then terminology and examples. Oh, yeah, there was quite an interesting uh, conversation. Um, or several conversations on the forum about the um, one page processor again. So I think Laurie finished. Um, oh, Laurie apparently has been on jury service. Well done, my friend. They're still, um, still doing that. Or do they do it remotely now, Laurie, given the uh, lockdown? Do you have to like do it over video or do they take you to some? Weird place. They were talking about using cinemas and stuff to do do things. Where did you have to go to do your jury service during lockdown? Nightingale Court. So this is uh, a building that's being converted um, to a court for you know over the COVID period. So it's not a standard court, it's a, a different kind of building, I guess. Theatre and museum, yeah. So it's a larger area, so it can space you out, I guess. Must be quite interesting. <laughs> well, at least you've got something to look at. If it's a museum, do you get to look around a museum as well? <laughs> what museum is it? Sorry. Lowry. Oh, right. As in the artiste. With his matchstick dogs, matchstick men, cats, and dogs. Cool, nice. Um, so, yeah, I think Laurie f finished porting uh, the OPC 6, which is quite interesting. You can, if you go down the forum, you can, you can see this. Um, and one of the things that we were talking about was <sighs> fitting everything on a page can be done. Uh, I think it has to be in, what was it, 66 lines or, or something. But um, it does start to look... It's not exactly what you call uh, readable. Um, and possibly less so in, in Mijin than in the Verilog. Um, my comment was that it looked like a bit of a wall of code. You're talking about very packed lines and, you know... So it fits into a page. The lines go really wide. Uh, and in particular, there's one thing where constants were being defined, uh, which is quite long. And then the signal definitions we were talking about as well. We have this long list of signals that are defined. Um, and we we're talking about, well, would you create that 
um, I think Laurie was using a lambda to create that. Uh, and another way of doing it is maybe using list comprehension. Um, or even, you know, if you had a function like signals, which would take a dictionary, Python dict, uh, with the name of the final variable and its uh, signal width or something similar might be a, a good way of doing that. But I mean, in reality, you wouldn't be trying to crush everything onto a page. You do a more structured thing. So if you've got a complex set of signals, what you do is you group them together into records and layouts to create structure. And then you bring in a record or layout that is named that has those subparts and it's a bit more organized. So, um, yeah, it looks a bit ugly in, in MyGen, but then and margin like Python is very verbose, so <coughs> we can see why uh, you're going to struggle with um, using M margin to do, you know, one page processes or very small um, single Verilog file, anything really. Uh, M margin like Python likes to deconstruct things into functions or objects or whatever. Um, so that's the best way to do it, really. So the two things are working in oppositions in many ways. Uh, one of the other things that uh, was quite interesting from that, hold on, I was going to do this. Um, so um, when, um, you know, one of the issues uh, Laurie had a couple of issues in M Um Some of the issues that you have in M Mijin are kind of conceptual issues because you're talking effectively about a domain specific language inside Python. I think they've taken a very Pythonic approach, which tends to mean they make decisions that look most Pythonic. In many cases that's why some of the cat things and the slicing all looks you know back to front compared to something like Verilog um, but from a Python point of view it doesn't look back to front you know it's sticking with kind of the way that Python um, puts things together so you find quite a few decisions like that but it becomes very ambiguous when you're looking at stuff and when you're mixing your DSL with your code, you know, your DSL is describing the hardware model that you're building. And then your code is um, assembling that model. Uh, and where those two meet, it can be very confusing. So one of the ones that he was struggling with, that he, or sorry, that he'd been caught out with, that I, and I've seen as well. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, Manipulate this window here. Um. Interesting. Yeah, I was going to mess with the size of the windows. I forgot to do that. Um, no matter. So one of the issues was uh, in um, in Mijen the uh, tilde symbol is used for effectively a not or invert inversion of something um, so you'd use that on a signal for example and it will behave as you expected but one of the other things is that you have a mux operator which is like a tertiary operator and the first thing it takes is a logical uh, value zero or one now, if that's a one bit signal or it's a bit of a larger bit signals uh, and if you invert that, that's fine. That works. 
But if it happens to be a Boolean, as in a Python Boolean that you're using in in there, then you get some you don't get the results that you expect. So just just to show you here, in fact, I might just I don't know how readable this is. Let me just take up the um, font size slightly. It might help. Bear with me. There's a frame break. Where are we? God, it's very difficult to find this code. Color scheme. Color scheme font. Color scheme font size 24. Console font 24. No, we're probably right. Um, how, how does the uh, font size look, guys? Can you see this? Is that readable? I uh, continue. So one of the things is if you have uh, a boolean and you try and not a boolean, it doesn't do what you expect. So if I not true, I get minus two. And if I not false, it's still running. Oh, that's weird. Please, do you want to push control C? Oh, I don't know. That's weird. I've not seen that before. I think it comes out as minus one, of course. Uh, I don't know what I've done. I've broken my Pi console somehow. Control C in the console to interrupt. Ooh, interesting. I think I've actually broken um, Pi Charm. Well, let me just give it a second to catch up. Anyhow, so what you get from when you think you're notting in those, you're not. The the not of those things is not, you know, the not of true is not false, and the not of false is not true. Um, that's because Python doesn't support the not of operator um, using the tilde symbol. Damn it. Right. Let me see if I can quit this and restart. Uh, let's have a go. What we have? Strange that it's gone off on one like that. Um, Mm -hmm. oh, it's going to be that kind of day, I guess. Mm. Is it still? Shit. Tears, let me just kill it. End task. Here we go. Let me run it again. Sorry, folks. <laughs> She's got some tea anyhow. That was kind of weird. Right, so let me do that again. Yeah, so tilde false or not false is minus one. Tilde true is minus two. No, so what you have to do is you have to use not, basically. But that's different. So conceptually, you've got two completely different things going on. And that's where, you know, although emotion is... Um, um, Pythonic, 
Bear me a sec. Just fix this. There are areas where that is not consistent. So um, you will find things like that. Um, you know, these things do trip one up, so to speak. I'm forever being tripped up with these damn things. Um, I've, I've had it before as well with other, not just with MMIGEN, but with other domain specific languages within Python. And it's very easy to get things mixed up. And it's nearly impossible to create a perfect DSL that is Pythonically perfect. It's just conceptually, it's impossible if you think about it anyhow. Oh no. Sorry, I had some spam. Um, where was I? Ah, yes. Um, so yes, when it was being used in the tertiary operator, um, the normal way that you use this is, is, is kind of max, and then you have a logical thing. I can't remember what it was. Um, that's kind of the way it works. So, you know, if this is true, it runs what's in here or does what's in here. And if it's false, it does what's in here. But of course, because this was a Python Boolean with the uh, inverter, it wasn't exactly doing what it was anticipated to do. Um, something else that um, um, Laurie noticed was that it, on the when you're using the with if with else, it does actually do a check to make sure you're not making that mistake, but not the case for Mux. Um, that may be something to do with the fact that that's um, are those what are they call the uh, with things are they context something or others in Python I forget the terminology but slightly different from just a normal function call or object creation so there might be an explanation why it's not done in one versus the other. But you do get these impedance mismatches between the DSL itself and the language. Context manager, thank you, Laurie. Um, now, uh, what else was I going to mention? So that was it. So what I wanted to do was actually go and do some work in MMIGEN, do something simple in MMIGEN, because I figured it'd be kind of useful for people. Um, Let me see if I can get my camera up. Hold on. How are we doing today, Mr. Camera? Video capture device. No, not that. Uh, the workbench. Oh, I can't remember what I called it. Hold on. Hmm. Video capture device tool. Okay, well, let's just can I add that to here? In fact, let's just switch, switch to that temporarily so you can see what's there. So, what I have um, is the um the revi of the alloy otherwise known as the icicle here and i've got that rigged up again 
with the wing board with the um, mix mod adapter then I have the test going off to the logic analyzer and then I've got a breadboard adapter here it goes off to a breadboard and then on the breadboard let's just see if we can move this a bit further this way then I've got something really simple it might be a bit light maybe I should mm. um, so this is a ULN 2003 which is basically a set of seven Darlington um, MPN drivers uh, which basically boosts the signal uh, so it can deliver up to about half an amp or something at five volts in this case and that is driving let me see if I can get this in see if you can see this so that's the uh, it's one of these just cheap very low cost Chinese type stepper motors I don't know if you've ever seen any of those so if you look at the leads what you have is you have um, uh, five leads one which is a common which carries the um, power and the other uh, four are for the two coils both ends of two coils um, and as a stepper motor what you have to do is you have to do this kind of um, uh, sequencing of the power through the coils to create a kind of rotating magnetic field um, so it requires a you know we're not using a stepper driver you know like a stepper driver chip here what we're doing is we're energy manually energizing the coils in order to you know using a digital signal not a sinusoid signal um, when when we when you do more complicated stepper control you actually have to use uh, a much higher uh, current control depth um, with a whole number of bits for each part of each coil to create an artificial sinusoid or phased sinusoids in order to shift it around accurately in small quantities. In this case it's less important, it's a much simpler motor, it's not that accurate but it's also geared inside as well so when you do a step it's actually moving a relatively small distance. Um, but for our purposes here it would be uh, a useful example. Um, so that's what we're going to be driving. Um, let's just go back to this. So I thought this would be an, uh, an interesting example because um, it's not particularly complex um, but it's got some interesting little bits in it. And the other thing I wanted to do was show off um, something that I got. Uh, I bought this. Um, I may have, I think I mentioned this last time, but normally um, when I'm working on different projects and stuff, I use uh, not the A4 ones. Uh, when I'm on a contract and stuff, quite often I use the A4 ones. Um, sometimes they supply them, but um, for my own projects, I prefer this slightly smaller size. And then inside, um, I've got, I use it for making notes. And I really like using it for doing, let me see if I can find some good examples here. You can use it for doing, um, drawing out timings and things and doing diagrams and stuff like that. But the important thing to note here is that, I don't know if that's focusing well, that it's like a squared paper. So I always use <coughs> a squared paper. Uh, let me find my index and a mechanical pencil. Not much of a pen user. 
I like to be able to rub stuff out. Um, so I use that. But what I was talking about was being dragged into kicking and screaming into the 21st century and using something a bit more um, digital. So what I've recently purchased is something called Remarkable. Uh, oh, let me give you... Yeah. Um, it, this is the Remarkable 2, and I didn't have a 1, although I do know people that had the 1, which is where I first saw it. But go check their site out if you want to know more about the details. You have to kind of order it in advance, and they make them in batches and stuff. But they're really, really uh, good. So what they are are basically uh well this is in the pouch but that's the device uh and that's the pen there are different choices of pens there's portfolio versions of the holder as well that's the remarkable if you look closely it's basically an e-ink screen but it is incredibly thin but very, very sturdy, lightweight, it's about 500 grams, something like that. But it has a surface that when you write on it with this, and this has 496 levels uh, and, and it will do both pressure and angle. So it's really like writing on paper, but it also has the smallest uh, delay when you're writing it out of any of the uh, paper-like devices out there. It's like 20 milliseconds or something response. So it really does feel like you're um, writing on paper. Um, but of course it's digital, which is really useful. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I've got it is A, so I can keep stuff digitally, which is useful, but I can also use it for things like streaming and stuff as well. Another cool thing is the magnetic pen. It just clips to the side. Very, very smart. Oops. Ta-da. So that's remarkable. Have a look anyhow. They're very, very cool. Uh, it's a bit of a wait when you order the damn thing. It took me months to get mine, but it was worth it. But I wanted the version 2, not 1. So one of the other things you can do, let me see if I can get this working. This is all very experimental, by the way, from my point of view. Um, I haven't tried this yet with OBS, but what I can do is there is a desktop sharing app. Let me just run that up. Which means that I can, for example, uh, uh, this probably doesn't look very good, but there you go. Um, let me try and pick this up. So I'm going to add this in. Hold on. So you can see what I'm looking at here. I'm going to add in. So there you can see the oh no you can't there you can see, there you can that you, there you can see me sharing the um, at the moment I'm sharing a document so this is the desktop app so this is just something I've scribbled and my scribbles are going to be untidy I warn you now um, I do apologise. But it's just the way it is, right? Um, uh, 
So it's great for direct drawing, timing diagrams and things like that. And it's got, and you can choose a template for the background. So like I have squared paper, but you're not just limited to that. So for example, this is the uh, blade stuff I'm working on, the micro blade stuff. So it's got an isometric um, template background that you can use, which is great for just sketching out stuff when you're trying to work out how things go together and that kind of stuff. So it's actually really very cool. So let's, I wonder, let me see if I can get this shared now. And I'll talk about what we're going to be doing today. So, uh, let's see if we can share this. Oh, it's complaining. Bear with me. Why is it complaining? Let me just make sure it's connected to the Wi Fi. Yes. Okay. So it should be connecting. Uh, this would be just typical. Check cloud sync. I'm still getting used to using it as well, by the way. You may have noticed. No syncing errors found. That's good. Okay, so if I go back and I do documents, sharing, it's connecting, I hope. And then on the screen, it asks me if I want to accept, and I say yes. Now, if the magic is working, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, when I um, write on here, you should be able to see what's going on. In real time, how about that? Isn't that very cool? Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is... Uh, rub stuff out which is nice uh, it's also got things like undo and selection and stuff like that but sometimes it does lose uh, sync which is really interesting so if I do this now hmm. It does have some very strange bugs sometimes. So, for example, I've just erased hello and I've erased that little uh, timing, but yet that's not erased. Hold on. So it's like the live erase doesn't work. That is very odd. Bear with me. We do it again. Ah, now it's updated. Uh, it, this feature is apparently still uh, still in um, beta. And you may be able to tell. Uh, we can do landscape as well, but let, let, let's keep that like that. So anyhow, on here, um, I've got my pin numbers at the back. That's why I've got that. Let me get rid of that. Um, 
So when we're exciting the um, motors, um, what we want to do, we've got basically we need to be driving four lines. So whenever we take any one of those lines low, remember it's got a common power into the motor. So it's kind of the way it's wired is like this. Um, Like this so you've got uh, a b c and d and then you've got a common um which is normally v plus um which for some reason you can't see come on oh dear Let me do it again. Be just typical. It starts giving me teething problems now. It was working perfectly before. Okay, like that. So you've got your uh, common voltage, and then by grounding A, B, C, or D, you're energizing one of two different coils uh, in a certain way. It's actually not two coils. Inside, it's wound where these coils are stepped around. Um, but if you apply the correct pattern, what you can do is you can pull uh, the magnetic. You're basically energy, uh, um, you're, you're, you're creating a magnetic field that's oriented depending on how you're driving the coils. And then the core of the, uh, the, the stepper motor um, is has magnets as well and that will align to where the magnetic field is so the trick is to apply a series of stepped voltages such that you're pulling it round each time so there's a set of sequences and the sequence if you were to look at it is something like if i remember rightly something like Something like this. Ah, it's really annoying. Keeps turning it off. He do not know why it does that. Come on. Should work first time. Please wait while we synchronize this document. Maybe it's having a problem with the cloud because I'm streaming. Entirely possible. Yeah. So you have this kind of offset. Um, in fact, that should be inverted. I've drawn them, drawn them the wrong, wrong way up. Um, but when I'm drive, driving the Darlingtons, um, the Darlington, by the way, is like this. And a Darlington named after someone or some place called Darlington, possibly, um, is basically um, two NPN transistors. So you can have V plus V up here, ground here, or sorry, uh, that's actually your load up here, the coil. So um, it basically acts like an inverter. So when this is... Um, uh zero then this is low that mpn's turned off which starves the current into the um uh, junction for the mpn here but if it goes one then um it takes this high the uh the transistor is biased into conduction which then buys the second one but the reason you've got two in a row is you um the, the gain of transistors is, is much lower than uh, metal oxide semiconductor type switches. So this gives you 
some extra gain because you've got two stages of gain effectively. It's a very common uh, configuration. I mean, you probably want to use FETs in real stepper driving situations because they're more efficient. Um, you do get a voltage drop across this Darlington, um, which you still can't see. I'm going to tell it to refresh. It's being awfully busy at the moment. Some reason. Hmm. This is annoying. Off. And back on. Hmm. There's clearly some bug with this, which is... Um, Stopping it to update there. You can see the um, Darlington on the left hand side um, Here So um, each one of those signals a B C and D drives this Darlington the Darlington effectively um, um, Acts like an inverter as well from a voltage point of view, but not from a current point of view now in order to do this, we must follow through a, a sequence of um, a sequence of states for those four bits, the A, B, C, and D. And that sequence, if I remember rightly, is something like hold on what was it it was i think it went one zero 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 uh and one one zero zero fact rather than using this which is playing up um, let's put this into here yeah, let's write this out so let me just get back my editor hold on So on here, what we need is uh, a series of states. Let's call it phases. Um, in fact, it's going to be a constant. So let's. I'm going to do it as a dictionary initially. So what I want to have is a series of eight different values, because this includes what's called half-stepping. Um, so I'm going to have the index, so that's the first one, and then the actual phase state of the four bits, 0B, uh, what was I saying, 1, 0, 0, Zero. One B zero zero. Yeah. And then the second state would be zero B zero one. Uh, it's dictionary separating those two. Zero. These are in binary, obviously in Python. Um, one one zero zero. I think. Then zero B zero um zero one zero zero hold on oops like that and 
I'll look on here. So the one one turn on zero B zero zero one zero zero one one zero one zero 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 one one I think I will have to check these in a minute. Um, B zero. Hmm. No, I've not got enough digits here. So B zero zero one zero. No, zero one, one, one net hundred, zero, one hundred, zero, zero. No. So eleven, one hundred. Uh, oh, I see what I've done. Um, right. Do 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 do. Oh, damn it. Then the sequence is going to repeat. So you know you can imagine this as being um, A B C D if you like. Oops. The values of A, B, C, and D to give us that shifting bit pattern for driving uh, driving the um, A, B, and C stepper motor coil phases. So that's that. Um, Going to need some signals as well. So. Let me copy that from one of these others. So when we did the spy stuff, we had this, didn't we? Uh, Let's call this motor zero. Let's call this um, motor. Um, let's call these S zero, S one, S two, three. In fact. Should let's just stick to what 
what we had before see so these are going to be the output signals from our logic uh, pins <sighs> gonna have to quickly look up do we want to put it on these ones I think uh, pin one four which is part of pin one right okay um, so I'm gonna need to do seven eight and nine I think there is seven eight nine and ten let me just explain what I'm doing there so I am grabbing a connector called PMOD of which I have two I have PMOD 0 and PMOD 1 in my attribute file um, I'm also going to need to do some imports hold on um, I need build. I mean, it, does this know? Sometimes this will. There we go. And. Oh. Does it know what these are? Build resource that signal and um, pins yeah and oh shift attributes oh why is that not coming out shift enter oh attributes order dictionary yeah that's right can be a bit tricky this having it on your path with something like pycharm really saves you a lot of hassle i mean you just could import everything from my gym build by the way that's what a lot of people do um i had <laughs> a recent con contract i was doing um couple of projects ago um, I had to work with a uh, remote guy um, who was a Python programmer he wasn't a hardware guy he did a bit of C but he was mainly a Python programmer and he was very very good at Python uh, he used to do my code reviews <laughs> two people used to have to do them it was a medical type uh, application they, there were some complex rules as there often is with the quality control um, uh, set up but um, one particular guy was completely anal about the code review um, and as well as there being all these fairly um, basic rules um, that you had to follow uh, loads of documents um, they uh, this guy was just unbelievably harsh but he used to absolutely kill me on these reviews uh, I mean it would take days to get through some of these code reviews but when it came to things like um, Python importing you know if you ever put a star up there he'd flip you know you have to be very particular about it not only that they all have to be alphabetically arranged etc 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 i mean it was really really anal uh so even to this day um 
when I'm writing certain telephone codes. <laughs> like, oh, I think about that. Um, anyhow, so yes, let, let me just explain what I've done here. So creating this resource, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm drawing upon this resource of connectors, this set of connectors. In, if you remember, we did the alloy.py file, which is the nmigen board file, which describes the resources that are available, uh, pinouts, etc., uh, in nmigen for the, in this case, it's the uh, alloy, alloy board. Um, so what we're interested in in this case is we were actually interested in these signals here on pmod4. Um, because when we're connected through, hold on, I can show you. Just to be completely anal about it, why not? But at least you can see exactly what's going on here. Sip of tea, if you don't mind. Oh, my word. My word. Come on. Oh, crikey, that's huge. Let's just make this a bit smaller. So if we look... Um, at the oh, icicle wing adapter thing that we're using that we're plugging into so don't bring that up on screen so that you can see cad 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 please be layout oh, why is it not showing please be layout oh it's showing the wrong hmm. okay Um, let me just get this in front of the um, editor. Hmm. I think I'd know how to use this by now, wouldn't you? How long have I been streaming? Weeks. So this is the board that we're plugged into, uh, that the alloy is plugged into. And at the top here, we've got the um, mix mode connector. And it's these four signals here. One, two, three, four, that go through the test board and then through the breadboard adapter onto the breadboard and into the uh, Darlington uh, driver chip. And if you look at these these four signals, um, they are um, first one here at the top is R1, and then 5B. Etc. 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 So if we go back uh, to the um, to the editor, uh, turn the layout off here. Um, when we actually look in here, you can see at the top it's the ones that I've isolated. These ones. These are the four pins. These are our A, B, C, and D core driving pins. Um, so these are just strings here at, at the top of this file. But when they're put into this resource format as a list, it's made up. When it puts those two together, it puts three and four together. And it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So the first one's seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then your power. If I go back, you'll see that's why I've used uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Those are the pin numbers of that connector. Bit complicated. Uh, I'm in two minds about the way that the pins are organized in um, MIGEN, to be fair. Right. Um, so that the resource is. Um, what are we going to need next? So we're going to need to design 
step up. So let's let's do our class uh, step up. Oh. And it's elaborable. That means it can model the hardware. Elaboratable even. Let me get it right. Oops. And we're going to need what are we going to need? We're going to need we're going to need the sequence. The sequence is represented here as a three digit set of codes basically zero to seven, eight different uh, sequences. So let's create self dot sequence, uh, which will be a signal of three bits. Yeah, be careful whether these things are named on the old Litex. Um, let me just check my notification, see what that was. Just paused a second there because I think I dropped, my frame rate suddenly dropped off. Apologies. Just checking that you guys have still got me because I had a brief um, break in the um, transmission there. Let me know. It takes time for this to catch up. I'm back. Thank you, Laurie. So I don't know if I just said that. So the first um, internal um, set of signals is sequence. which is a three bit signal. Uh, in this case, it's eight different values. And then the other thing we're gonna need is the phases, or the phase, sorry, which is the A, B, C, D signal. And that's a four bit signal. Okay. Uh, I think it's all we need for the moment. Um, then we're going to need an elaborate method, which is cool. On this overrides the standard one that we've got from elaborateable. It's something that we have to implement. Elaborate uh, self. What else are we going to need? We're going to need the platform uh, of type platform. I try and use types where I can. I, it's a bit more difficult in um, Python because. Um, um, I'm just trying to think. This is from typing. Uh, hold on. Platform and my from my gym build. No platform. 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 Is 
it from nmigen build or is it nmigen build platform? Oh my goodness, I think it's that. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult to tell what the types should be sometimes. Some of them are obvious, some of them are less obvious because it's not a type language. So, uh, platform, what else do I need to pass in? That's it, I think. What does that return, actually? It returns a module, which we also need to import. No. Ow. That's annoying when it does that. Come on. Hmm. Should does it get that by default? Very sure. Yeah, there we go. Uh, module finder, compact, no, it's mmigen module. I think that's right. Apologies. Elaborate. Um, we will need our motor, which we're going to get from the platform. Um, what I'll do is I'll add it to the platform in main. And I called it motor, didn't I? Oops, typo. Uh, we're going to need a counter. Um, 20 bits should be enough. We might be able to get away with less. I just need something to test it with, really, at this point. So I want to go through the sequence. Sequences, sorry. Right, and we use the um, normal clock domain, default clock domain. So this is pretty simple. So what are we doing here? We we are if we're exercising the sequence. This this different ways that we can do this this is one way that I've done it before what we could say is uh, use a switch and a bunch of cases this is effectively um, we will update sorry I don't know why the site it, this is annoying it's coming out 
again bear with me hopefully I'm back now uh, I don't know which bits you might have missed double underscoring in it yes thank you all <laughs> sorry yes um in lab all right so um thanks story by the way if i want to so effectively my cases will be the different sequence states so i need to set my abc phase signals depending on what this state is so my each one of my switches here could be um, a case that represents each one of these. So that would be uh, like um, let me think. Be like with m dot case. Uh, so if I t if I was to take the first one for example, so in the first state I would have um, dot d <clears throat> dot sync. Uh, I'd update this. Oops, I'd update the status to. Uh, the phase, sorry. Oops. Be equal to, in this case, like that, right? But I'd have a case for each one of those. Um, Sorry, T. Before it gets cold, it sounds like it's still raining outside. Okay. I, I'm I'm getting corrected by Laurie here. <laughs> so I, I'm used to it. It can't be anywhere as bad as this other chat was. Um, Oh, yeah, good point. But um, if, if we were going to do it this way, the trouble is we'd have to enumerate all of them. My whole point of creating this was not only so that I knew what they were, but that I knew I was going to be able to do something a bit more clever. So what I can do is, because this is Python, I can say for um sequence and uh phase wasn't it Let's see here one um in, in phases items something else that really annoyed me about their rules actually and this isn't necessarily their fault uh, the particular this phase is, isn't it? This one, yeah. Um, you couldn't do this um, because in certain was it PEP one one two or whatever it is, you're not allowed to use all caps. <laughs> of course, you know, coming from a C background, it's like you know, very common practice with constants and defined and things like that is to use caps and it stands out so yeah fuck you reviewer excuse my french i do mark these as not child friendly just in case i want to put a little thing like that in because youtube does ask when you upload these um so what am i saying here so for seek and phase in phase item so in other words i'm itemizing this dictionary one at a time 
which returns two parts uh, the first part of the dictionary which we use to look it up and itself so the sequence and the phase in this case um, uh, do, 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 do. and the items is a, an iterator effectively we can then this is one of the better things of um, um, and margin. Uh, then we can say put seek there. Oh, why is it highlighted phase already? I haven't used that yet. You're before your time. And we can do the m dot d dot sync. Isn't that calling that up automatically? Not. Hmm. Interesting. Have I not imported something? Um, we want to change the state. Self phase. Uh, ooh. However, we want to make that equal whatever the new value is defined by phase that we've just taken out of here. So this is a more abbreviated way of doing all of those cases in a in a switch, which is kind of nice. That's where you get some of the benefits of using something like nmigen. Um, it's Pythonic in that sense, I guess. I'm assuming everyone can still hear me now. It's reporting reconnect and... Um, oh, I forgot my colon. Reconnect and... Um, Good frame rate, so do do do, and then oh yeah, so that that's that's done actually. I need to return the module. What's going on outside? It sounds like does it suddenly the wind really picked up? I hope it hasn't. Put a load of rubbish out tonight in bags, extra recycling. Ah, oh, it's going to blow everywhere. I'm going to spend tomorrow morning walking around the street picking up my garbage on my recycling. And the foxes will probably take it apart anyhow. Right. Um, elaborate. So have I covered my bases? Counter signal. I need to, um, in fact, I won't have these here. I need to put those externally. I think let me take those out we need to put those in, in my test bench back to this in a minute once I've checked everything else but we, we we will need something to actually exercise this and all I'm going to do is go through the sequence effectively um, platform which is of type platform returning module
Let's just put that in there because we're going to need that as well. Oh, I know I forgot ports. They've been needing supports. Let's do it here actually. Ports. This is useful when you're doing the um, when you're enumerating the uh, the, the signals. Oh, well, it's a list of signals, isn't it? Done this before, I should know this type. self list signal and then we return a list of those right okay so that is right turn list self dot sequence and self dot phase oops I've got a comma down to the door. That's why. Sorry, it's so painful watching me code, folks. Hardware engineer at heart. <laughs> My original programming language is solder. Forgive me. <laughs> Not true, actually, it was basic. It's the first language I ever learned. And that was on a ZX81, I believe. And then I did a bit of assembly, Z80 assembly, I think, from memory. For games. Make it faster, because the basic was shit slow. And there was no memory, etc., etc. And the keyboard was rubbish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we've got our ports. We've got our elaborate method. So that's it. The, the stepper itself is actually quite simple. Why has it got a problem with me returning M there? Is it because I haven't got a new line? Yes, just pie charm. In fact. Why am I calling it test bench? Why don't I just call it bench? It's bloody easy. I hate abbreviations like that. Um, oh, this will need an init. Sorry. 
Eh, oh god. What do I need? Yeah, uh, what am I gonna need? I'm gonna need. I need a stepper. I need one of these. Here. That's what I need. So. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Right, I need a main. Um, um, do the old weirdo Python main nonsense. Hmm. Oh, I do hate that. How unintuitive. Uh, I need to pass the arguments, don't I? I've done this here. So I need something like this. That probably be the same as the SPI one. I need to import the um oh come on oh hey, so where will that be part of the build tools Why isn't it giving me that? Um, imagine. Hold on. Let's cheat. It's not obvious. Ah, there we go. Oh, I need the board as well. Maybe. Well. Wait a minute. Let's import these two. I need a simulator as well. In fact, let me just copy all of that. So I need to cherry pick from this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To what I've already got here, I don't need all of that. I might need the simulator. Don't need. Do I need? What do I need from build? I do need this M. I will need that. Um, what will I need? I will need. Forgive me, folks. As I get this boilerplate done, I need that alloy platform. That is what I will need from here. Uh, Main parser. I'm going to need some of this in a minute, and I don't know which. Don't know if I'm going to need delay. I will need simulator. And these aren't alphabetical. Oh dear, what a shame. Never mind. Um. 
So just going back down to here, the other part we need, we need this um, else down here. I'm cheating here a little to get the boilerplate done. Alloy platform, that's going to be the same. That's not going to be it. It's going to be stepper bench. Those are going to be the same. This will be an M0. So here I'm just adding it to the platform. The thing that I've defined at the top, I'm adding onto the platform. My definition of the pins for the motor driver, M0. So that one is basically this one. Yeah. So that's basically the end. Uh, and then I do need to do the simulation uh part of that hold on hmm. what did we do on here we're gonna need that we're gonna need that that all of that's the same this is going to change slightly We don't want the, we want uh, mm, what are we doing here? We used spy device, didn't we? So I am mumbling a little bit. I will catch up. We've got spy LED, spy LED bench, spy LED device for our simulation. I don't know if that's different. Uh -huh. Right. So I've got two. Uh, so the bench. One's not a bench actually. One is sim. Let's just do sim. Here, step us in. correct here it's not actually the class it's an instance delay I did need to import delay shit sorry I've just noticed that folks why isn't my quick key working with this Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Typo in it. I'll take a look just a sec. Let me just get this first. Oh, it's part of the um, high sim. High sim. Okay, that's why. Um. So what you're saying, Laurie, after switch coupling over analog, you are not using self.seek typo in it. I, I am using self. Oh, I should be using in stepper self.seek case seek case seek. Uh, Uh, 
Um, yes, I am. I'm using it here. Sorry. I'm doing my switch on self.seek. You have me worried for a bit there. Yeah, and this is really generating the case statement. That's why it's a bit confusing. And I'm using a seek here that's being pulled out of a, you know, that's being iterated through uh, the two parts of the phases dictionary. Um, right, hold on. So when we do the, let me just double check. What am I doing back here? When I'm doing the simulation. I might be just getting myself mixed up here. Let me just check what I did. Simulator, FPGA, sim, FPGA. I mean, what is sim? FPGA is a spy device. Spy device. Okay. Um, that's where I'm getting mixed up. So, no, that shouldn't be. Mm. My pie charm has just hung on me again. This is really weird. I've had that problem with the remarkable desktop earlier. Now, this is the second problem I've had with the bloody. Um, Pie charm. That I can't even see my mouse. Hold on. Uh, let's just switch to something else. I cannot see my mouse. Damn. Maybe this is a, like a graphics bug or something. That's really weird. Ouch. This is tricky, folks. What am I going to do now? How do I get that back? God, this is annoying. Uh, let me go to back there. Now the curse is stuck. I can see it on the screen. Uh, I'll go to OBS maybe. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'll go to my kid. No. <laughs> Bear with me, folks. There's a bit of trouble here. Give me back my mouse. Hmm. I wonder if I can end. Uh, how do I get to my taskbar without the mouse? Anyone know? Because I haven't left the uh, task monitor running. Yeah. Let's just get out of the cat, see if that makes any difference. Okay. Right, so if I, hmm, I might be able to use the control keys to get out of here. Alt F. God, long time since I've done any of this stuff. Let's just get out of here. Exit. Exit. Right, have I got my cursor back now? Ooh, I've lost my cursor! <laughs> oh my god! How very annoying. Does it think I've got another screen? Bear with me, folks. Has something captured it that I'm not aware of? Let me just quit some of these other things. Uh, in case. Hmm. 
don't even know if I can get out of this. There's no quick keys for this application. Uh, that's annoying. Uh, Alt D. Yeah. It doesn't underline. That's very naughty. Oh, wait a minute. Is there an execute? Full screen count. Wow. No exit on the menu. It's a weird kind of app. What kind of app does that? Can I do a control W? No. Yeah. I'll quit. Alt W. Get out of the damn thing. I wonder if it's this one that's messing with it. Hmm. Uh. Well, 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 well. That's rather amusing. Not. I wonder if it's that that's causing the problem. Uh, hold on. Can I do an alt or a control tab? Can't use the arrows. Oh. Escape. Escape. Should be a little control W, why is it not? Damn, man! I don't think I've ever had this happen. Okay. I wonder if I can get my. See if I can kill it in the task manager. Alt E and task. Hmm, still no cursor though. Right, bear with me a sec. Let me see if this works. I may disappear and come back. Hold on. This is interesting. Damn. How do I get to... Incredible. Something has stolen my mouse and I can still not get it back. I don't want to stop the stream. Because if I stop the stream... I will lose you guys, and it actually creates a new stream, which is annoying. This is unbelievable. I don't think I've ever had that. Any clues how to find your cursor in Windows if it disappears off? Anyone else had this issue before? Teach me to use Windows, won't it? Oh, apologies, people. This is very, very annoying. If I go back to the browser. 
was uh, what happens then? It's not actually anywhere on screen because something going on here Houston we may have a connection I wonder if it's something to do with bear with me I've got an idea Whoa. Horses, folks. Oh, no, it's not nice to get these. I'm back as the goddamn mouse died silently no warning damn normally it gives me a warning right anyhow I'm back apologies right where were we seem to have lost rather a few people never mind I'm gonna finish anyhow even if for my own sanity right do apologize guys Just get it back up running, guys. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Where did it leave us? That is actually. That's what I was just chasing. So on my step I did a sim section, didn't I? Hold on, on the device. Sim. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. Well, I can do it under here. Hold on. Hmm. I don't need a sim section, I need a sim. Uh, never right. Sim. So, not a sim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. M modules, FPGA. So, M sub modules. Self. So,
-hmm. Sorry, I'm just copying back from what I did on this. What do you want? What's there? Oh, yes, yeah, stuff. Like... Hmm? Hold on. It's a bit confusing. M sub modules. That... Mm. Then I need to do what I'm doing up here. That's right. So it's just a bit more of an integrated way of doing it, which is better. Uh, uh, what did I need to do with that? Um, I need a tool. To exercise. Uh, need to increment oh no, what am I going to do sink and let the unit sink plus equals Counter what equals counter plus one. Oh, I keep putting commas in. Vart is up with my typing today. And then I need a combination of. In fact, plus equals. Uh, is that right? Sequence. Equals. Um. Count it now. I've got a 20 bit counter. Let's do a 16 to. I need three bits of that counter. The top three bits, more or less. Oh, hold on. Need to output to the motor pins, whatever the phase is. 
So the phase I'm attaching to the output, the motor is basically the pins and the output. Remember, we're getting that from here. That is defined by this, which is the output pins. Uh, so that's always going to equal whatever phase is self dot phase, which is stepper, because this is part of stepper, this simulation. Oh, I think that's right. Hmm. Oh, what does it like about this? Expected two blank lines. Oh, it's just being pedantic. Okay, let's see. Hmm, why doesn't it like this? Shadows name platform from outer scope. Platform. Does it? What? We're not doing anything with these yet, but we're going to do something similar to here. Um, I know whether that test bench should be inside here, it might be easier, but anyhow. So, what happens if I try and um, do some of this alloy stepper? Python 3 alloy stepper simulate. I need a simulate. A whole bunch of uh, things I need to pass in to the default sim, and I've, I haven't run this for a while, so let me just find one. <sighs> Here we go, alloy. Oh, hmm. Oh. Platform. I need to pass it into Platform is not defined. Hmm? Are using platform in a sim method, but not parameter. All right, let me just check what I did here. Platform was using a normal platform. Wait a minute. Using platform here, I'm not importing it somewhere, maybe. Uh, build. Is that what's happening? No. Hmm. 
imagine import imagine import platform maybe it's here is that right Fuck. No. No, 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 no. I can't see the wood for the trees. Laurie, what are you saying? Platform. No, no, platform. That returns the platform. So where are you complaining about this? No, no, platform not defined. 944. Ah. Ah. Yes. Right. Um, I, did I add it in? No. Yes, I had it in there. But where am I getting platform here? Um, Def Sim. Hmm. Where do I get platform from? Yeah, it's a it's a parameter on. How am I doing it here? Hold on. A sim. I'm not using platform in here. That's why. That's why. So how do I do that on sim? Oh, well. So I, I'm just being an ass. Ignore me. I don't need it for sim. Ugh. Twat. I need it for bench, but not for sim. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me just sort windows out. Uh, right, so alloy to P one fifty one in SI motor. There is no motor. Of course, there isn't. Hmm. There's just cell phase, so I just need to look at the cell phase. I don't need that. I don't need that at all. It's always right in the first place. For the bench, I need that. Oh, it's so annoying. Can you see? Ah, oh, apologies, folks. Let me just shrink this window down because you can't actually see what's going on here. Oh, go away, Windows. Defend the message. Thank you. All right. Uh, simulate step and names for this action simulator. Uh, did that work? Uh, hold on, just run. Um, oh, I can never find GTK Wave. So annoying. I did put a shortcut, I think, somewhere. Hold on. Could be. Oh, where did I put it? Did I put it on the desktop? I can never find the damn thing. Um, hmm. Maybe it's in PowerShell. There we go. So I need to change into this directory first, and then I need to do run GTK wave, and I need to look at stepper. <sighs> Sorry, you can't see this, guys. Let me share. Let me share this. Bear with me. Uh, GTK wave. Yeah, let's just take that in front of 
High charm. Let us see what we have. Uh, let me zoom right out. Have I gone in too deep here? Jesus, I think I might have. How long have I run this damn thing for? Four, eight, four, e to the minus eight. Ooh, I might want to change my parameters slightly here. All right, there we are, somewhere in here. Jesus. So I've got my clock. My face is changing by the looks of it. Hmm. Eight. Zero. What? Hmm. Uh. Sync clock to 1000, sync period for E. I just naught A, G, G, K, C. Is that 1000 cycles? What am I saying? 4E to the minus 8. It seems rather fast. Hold on. I need to know Wow, it's really peeing it down outside. I can hear it banging on the roof. Let me just reciprocal this. What does that give me? That gives me. 25 megahertz 24 to 6 yeah, I think about 4.16 so it's the right clock speed but nowhere near enough cycles right because I'm only going for Hold on. I'm only running for 10, 20 microseconds, 40 microseconds. Not enough. Let me do 10,000. Let me reload. Uh, I think it's control R, isn't it? Nowhere near enough. Uh, shift control R. Control reload. Oh boy. Uh, so on the simulation, <laughs> just changed. Because uh, I'm thinking in real life, I don't need to do 16.9 here. I could do flipping. I only need to, I think I can do one like four and a lot less cycles.
So I don't actually need it to be in normal real time. Reload. Yay, there we go. I was just being stupid. I do apologize, folks. So at the start here, we can kind of see the uh, uh, the reset signal here, zero. Then, we'll start with zero. then it jumps to eight. So here we're looking at the phase. The value is eight. The sequence is zero, zero, one. So let's change the phase because we want to see that not as a we want to see that in binary really. So here we can see those phases coming through. One zero zero. Uh, let me just bring them back up here. Just fit them in here, maybe. Bear with me a second. Type modification. So you can see them at the top here, these phases corresponding. So we get the one zero 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 one one zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero zero one etc etc right till we get to the end which is one zero zero one which corresponds to our last one on here so it's going through exactly what we expect voila very good so um how are we doing for time quirky two and a half hours already apologies folks hope you haven't all fallen asleep uh let's see if i wonder if we can quickly do a bench so let's just go back here mm -mm -mm. Let me just change the order here. Just turn the um, waveform viewer off for a sec. Um, so the bench is going to be very similar here. Um, but we will need that to be a separate elaborate motor platform. And then what did we do? We did modules uh m module so we need to do something similar to this but we're going to change it slightly because we're going to create m so that's not going to be self that's going to be self dot step up and be synced up counted and this I really do this time need to add in, yeah, that's going to be, what did I say, 16 to 19, top three bits, comma, and I need to also motor dot equals uh, self dot stepper dot phase. Self dot sequence, it doesn't like that. Self dot sequence, self dot step up. That sequence. So this is when we're running the bench, and this does need platform because we've got an output here that we need to connect to. Oh, dee -da -dee -da. And then we need to run that. So do we step a bench? What happens if I run that? Oh, no, 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 alloy. Step uh, mm. Hold on, what have I done? That have I done here? Yeah. Some supplements. 
yourself, Marjorie. Don't separate yourself. Don't step up. Object has no attribute to stepper. Uh, oh, it does. Uh, one of those things. What is this? Hmm. Huh. Typo. Jesus. God. Why is it complaining about platform? Okay. This will probably complain because it can't see the D drive or something. But it didn't. That's interesting. There with me. So that could actually be running in the FPGA. Hold on, let me just check. Uh, I'll just run the logic analyzer and see if there's anything coming out in the outputs. Um, I can't see anything on the logic analyzer yet. Let me check. Have I? Let me open the um, Python on the <sighs> the. So I'm opening the Python code file on the flash that's on the alloy board here. Okay, it looks good. Let me just check also what uh, is running. I need to just connect to the serial port. Just want to make sure that I'm actually talking to. So let me just save this. I'm surprised it didn't complain actually. Okay. <laughs> There's a quick key for changing your keyboard settings, I'm sure there is, because every now and then I accidentally hit it and go to an American keyboard. So I've saved that. Yeah, it's loading that now, running, seeing something on Putty. Uh, hold on. Now oh, it's complaining, it's not keeping up with them. Ah, ha, ha, yes. So, right, let's get rid of that because that's really annoying. Save. This is very good. Right, so I know something's coming through. Let me just share with you all now um, what we're seeing. So we need the logic analyzer. Okay. 
voila so this is the output from the um, logic analyzer so this is what we're seeing on the ABC pens ABCD pins you see what I mean about this stepped shifted so that looks kind of right so let me um, let's try and switch tool here Uh, it's power, power, the stepper motor. I'll check the connections as well. It's connected, that's connected. We've got a signal, definitely. Don't see anything quite happening yet. Can I feel any vibration from there? No. Definitely got a signal. Hold on. Let me check my wiring. Uh, let me just check my power leads. I have to get the scope out in a sec. There's definitely a signal going in there. Just check my voltage, current limit. No, we're not current limiting. This is connected in ground. Right, well, strange. We've definitely got a signal going here. I'm just going to do another capture with the logic analyzer. Ah, there's nothing on the logic analyzer now. Interesting. Let me just redo this. Maybe I've tripped the Python or something. Hold on. Hmm. It's working. Voila! That's what's really odd though. Why am I why does my caption not show it? Maybe I'll caption now. Oh, it is capturing now. I don't know what the delay was. That is very odd. But there you go, look, that's the stepper motor turning. Do we have a clap of hands, please? Yeah, thanks, Laurie, for the any not in it. I didn't notice that you said that. But I did see the problem. Voila! Look at that! We have the motors going. I'm kind of out of time now. 
But I mean, maybe what we could do next time with this is now that we've got the bench working and the, um, but obviously the sim works. I don't know what the delay is there and it's starting up. I'm just wondering if I've got a loose connection or something. I'm, I will need to more rigorously um, check that. But, um, the next stage would be having this driven by two incoming lines from the microcontroller. So having a step line and a direction line. And then after we do that, maybe we can then start hooking up to the spy interface even and actually send a number of steps to move or something like that. Um, it's a ULN, uh, ULN 2003, I think. If you've got Eagle, it's a standard part in there. Um, let me get you a link. There are different um, manufacturers that make this. It's been around a long time. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, this is the kind of thing that um, brings up some nasty links if you're not careful. Uh, ST do a version of it, for example. Uh, but you, you, you can pick them up from uh, China or whatever. If you do a search on like AliExpress you can find them or eBay. Um, let me, they're dead cheap. I mean stupidly cheap. Oh, bloody cookies. You can even get them on boards. So if you do a search on Ali, you can find them. Um, you know, depends whether you want surface mount or dip. Um, fuck off. Excuse me, I'm, I'm swearing again. Ali's generating a lot of crap every time I go on. Doing my head in. Yeah, some dips. Uh, how much are these? Ten pieces of this is, I don't know. Wait a minute, if I choose 20 pieces. Yeah, 10 pieces for like 69 cents or something. This is going to be a horrifically long. Just just go on to AliExpress and do a search for that. I'm not going to post the bloody URL. Why don't they provide a short URL? Really annoys me, Ali. Not doing that. You think they'd have it? I can't see it here. But yeah, you can get 10 for like 69 cents. They're less than 10 cents each. You can get them for about 6 or 7 cents each. Um, your mileage may vary and you can get a board uh, so if you don't want to do it on a breadboard you can actually get a board with them on um, so a populated board um, with a header oh that's the wrong type of header for these steppers hold on uh, there is a better one you can pick up the boards probably off eBay something like this. Uh, see if I can share my browser window. Hold on. Uh, browser. Turn it on. Bring it up front. Hmm. Uh, 
Oh, so slow. Voila, one of these. No worry. Mm, too much of a zoom. That's 53 cents. So that's already populated has a bunch of LEDs as well. How very pretty. And I think you can plug the motor directly in. Um, one of those sorts of connectors. So you can find these on eBay and places like that, mate. Now, but you can drive it from Black Ice, MX, or your ULN. Don't have to use alloys. You probably use the uh, Black Ice MX to do it, mate. Shouldn't be difficult to do that. In fact, you can probably find it on the ULX 3SS. 3XS. And then just hook up the pins, the input pins, just using uh, header jumpers. Yeah, I mean, steppers are quite fun because you've got state as well. I mean, these are very simple ones. We're not talking about micro-stepping here. We're just talking about half-stepping and stuff. But these are great. I have a project that I've got to do that I wanted to use some of these for. That's not just a toy project. I needed something with a whole bunch of really cheap uh, steppers. And I might bounce back to that at some point. Um... Because what you need in that case is a lot of pins to drive them. Because each stepper takes four pins. Um, so you run out of pins quite quickly. And I needed like 20 or 30 of these steppers running concurrently. So you start using up a lot of pins very quickly. Any other questions before I disappear? Turn this off. Bing bong. Off. Um, so hopefully that was a useful intro anyhow. And as I say, we, we'll probably carry that on, do a bit more next time on the m and stuff. We could probably add a direction and step control signal so it can be controlled directly from the ESP32 on the alloy or any other microcontroller for that matter and then the step after that would be depending on whether we've got time or not to use the spy interface and on the spy interface we could do all sorts of things so we could have a register for how many steps it moves so once it receives a command to move steps it then uses that register counts down until it's done all the steps you could even have speed parameters and other registers and things like that as well. Okay, so if there are no more questions, I'm going to call it a day because we've been streaming now for two and three quarters of an hour. Um, so, why did it say 1.08? a bit longer than that right guys well listen uh, thank you very much for joining me this evening I know it was a little bit chaotic um, I had the kind of idea what I was doing I knew some of the community items I was going to cover and I knew I wanted if I had chance to do you know a bit of uh, stepper stuff in M Mijin, which I think we did which is good um, the, I'm going to have to work on the Remarkable interface. I don't know why that's not syncing up. It may be, because I think it might go up to the cloud and back down. So I don't know if that's just an issue with the streaming or, or what. I'm going to have to play around with that. Because it's kind of useful to be able to do your timing stuff. Sketch out your ideas and things. Um, so I'll have a look at that. Maybe we could do a bit more, a bit more next week. 
So if there's any more on this, obviously I'll be down at the forum, post a question, etc., uh, or any other questions to do with the alloy type stuff, then just, just ping me down there and we'll carry on. So thank you folks. Um, enjoy the rest of the week. Uh, hopefully I should be streaming again as usual next Wednesday. 8, 8 p.m. GMT. Cheers. Ciao.